and be glad in it. Amen. It is good just to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. For this being the first Sunday in March of this uh, brand new year, that we get another chance, another opportunity to do it right. Another opportunity to reach out to somebody that may be lost in darkness. Another opportunity to grab hold to a friend and let them know how important it is to be covered by the blood. How important it is to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who's given us the greatest gift that we could ever receive. The one that continues to hold on to us. The one that lifts us up when we fall. The one that we call to when after we leave our mothers and our fathers and we find ourselves in trouble. As over the times we have seen those that have fallen and they call out to their mother. And I see that and I was like, my heart goes out. Because they gave the appearance that they did not know the Lord. Your mother can't help you at those times. When I was in Desert Storm, when I was in the Iraq war, when I was in Afghanistan, I knew who to hold call on. Even though I love my mother very much, and she has gone on to glory, but there's only one person that can help you in times of that. And that is our Lord, Jesus Christ. Down at the cross, where I first saw the Lord. Down at the cross, where I first saw light. Down where my cleansing of sin, I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life, singing glory. We please stand for the reading of the, of the Holy Word. We're going to be coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 34. For I have received of the Lord 
that which also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped and saying, This cup is the New Testament and my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this cup, this, you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye excuse me, <clears throat> do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not condemn, be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if a man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. God, me. As we sit here today, 
as I said in the card among you. Thank you. I want you to humble yourself now before your almighty God. We need to have a conversation with him. We need to thank him for all that he's done for us. So as God told Solomon, I've heard your cry. I've heard your prayer. If you would tell my people to humble themselves before me and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive them of their sins. So I want you to call to your father today. I want you to humble yourself today along with me. To say, Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your care. We thank you for watching over us. Yeah. We know, Father, that we wouldn't be here today if it was thank not for you. you. Thank you. Because you brought us through this COVID. You brought us through all the sinful things of the world. Yeah. And we are not of this world, but we're in this world. Yeah. You protect us every single day of our lives. Lord, stop by here today. Yeah, yeah. And touch us, Father, and cleanse us. Help us to know your promises. Help us to know that you are a promise keeper. Yeah. Help us to know, Father, that you love us with all your heart. Yes, sir. We love us so that you gave your son to die on the cross for the sins of this world. And we stand before you today. Yeah. Humbling ourselves before you, asking for forgiveness for anything that we've done that's put against your holy word. Father, hear our cry today. Hear our cry today. As we pray to you individually, we know that you hear us. We know that you love us. We know, Father, that the only thing we need is your word. For your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Lord God, help us today. We need you. Stop by here. Touch us. You know our pain. You know our sorrow. You know the things that are keeping us from coming to you. You know the things that bring us to you. Lord God, thank you for everything that you've done. For everything that you're doing for us. We need you, Father. Hear our cry today. Hear our cry today, Father. Stop by here. Father, stop by here and touch us. Stop by here and bless each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, that you open the sanctuary so that those who need you can come in and sup with you. Lord God, we hear your knock and we open the doors of our lives and ask you to come in and be with us. We need you today, Father. We need you today, Father. We thank you today, Father. We bless you today, Father. We ask that you bless those that are sick and shut in. Protect them and keep them safe. Bless for those that are lost that don't know your word to somehow find a way to this sanctuary or to any sanctuary and praise your name thank you, thank you. and lift you up and get to know who you are, a magnificent God who spoke everything into existence and who breathed, who's everywhere all the time and any time. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Bless this particular church, yes, Father. Sir. Yes, sir. Bless those that are congregating today yeah. in your holy name. Yeah. Touch us, Lord God, with your power. Touch us, Lord God, with your love. We pray to you today, Father, in the name Thank of your you. Son, who came and died on the cross for the sins yeah. of this world. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you. Thank God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where am I? Where am I? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound? Oh, I have a Savior in that land. I have a Savior in that land. I have a treasure in that land where I'm bound. Peace and happiness in that land. Peace 
and happiness in that land. Peace and happiness in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Peace and happiness in that land. Peace and happiness in that land. Peace and happiness in that land. Where I'm bound. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for lifting up your voices, open up your hearts to receive what the Holy Spirit has placed. So let us continue on. Let us walk upright. Let us be bold as children of the Lord, that we can move forward, that we can draw all that Throwing themselves in darkness and be strong, lift up one another, and go in love and peace. Amen. How many of you know that God never stops making a way? God never stops making a way. We want to welcome you to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Welcome to Virtual Sanctuary, and ask that we lift up God's holy and His divine name. God is truly good. Yes, is. Right? We shouldn't be here today, but we thank God for his sacrifice, that he paid the price. And it is because of his blood we can stand here. And when we look back over our life and think things over, we can just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So I pray that we lift up the name. We leave it right here. Leave it right here. Right in this moment, God, we give you our heart. And we leave it right here, God. We don't want to leave the same way we came in. Lord, we need a life-changing experience on this morning. Lord, we need you, Lord, for you to change our lives from the inside out, God. And Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, every single mountain be removed by faith. I don't know how many mountains we have in our lives, but by faith in Jesus, it's removed. But it's only if we step out of God's way and let him do the removing in our lives. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for this day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to be glad therein. It's prayer time, church. And I don't know about you, but I need God every day. I, I can't make it without him. And without him on my side, I, I don't know where I would be. And I remember when I was growing up and when things happened in my life that I didn't understand, I would go to my mother because I was raised in a single family home. And there was time that my mother couldn't help me. But she would always tell me about this God. And I didn't know nothing about God at the time. But I remember one time I was grown up and I was living in Portland, Oregon and I was walking down the street and I didn't have a job and I passed by this church and I remind myself about what my mama had told me about this God and I went on inside this church and I got on my knees and I prayed unto this God. And I stopped by today to tell you that God heard my cry. And I want to encourage you this morning. If there are anything that's troubling you in your life, if there are anything that is hindering you from doing God's will, I stopped by today to tell you that there is a God that's still high. There is a God that's look low. There is a God that have all power in the palm of his hand. I stop by to tell you that God is able to do all things but fail. It's prayer time. Yeah. 
my Father which art in heaven. I come this morning because I realize that who you are. I know, I, I say I know that you are God and that you have all power in the palm of thy hand. I know that without you, I am nothing. And I know that you are all powerful God. You created the heavens and earth and all within. And everything belongs unto you. And I want to say thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your son Jesus Christ. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his suffering. Thank you for his death. But most of all, I want to thank you for his resurrection by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, oh God, we need you right now. We need you right now. Somebody needs you, God, like I need you myself. Lord, have your way in our life today. Lord, forgive us of our sin. Lord, we know that we have not done right. Lord, we know that we have said things we shouldn't have said. But have mercy on our soul. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for all that we have done and all that we have not done. Lord, we need you today. Lord, I pray for everyone in this church right now. Lord, we all need you. Lord, my needs might not be your need, but we all need you. Lord, help us today. Help us today to live a holy life. Help us today to walk in your word. Help us today to love one another. Help us today to be given to one another. Help us today to help those that are not convinced those that don't know you. Help us, Lord. Lord, we help we need you today. Lord, bless this church. Lord, continue to bless our pastor and his wife. Lord, continue to empower him by your spirit. Because I realize and know that he can't do nothing without the spirit working in and through him. Dear Lord, bless my church family. Lord, bless all of my sisters, brothers in Christ. Lord, strengthen them where they're weak. Build them up where they're torn down. Remove for all God. Keep your hand upon us and your spirit dwelling within us. Then bless this service today. Bless the musicians today. Bless the choir today. Bless the deacons today. Bless those that are not saved today. Oh God, let your power ring. Let your power ring. That somebody may ask, what must they do to be saved? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph, cause he's worthy, he's worthy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on and clap your hands, hallelujah, 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 hey, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Come on, is there anybody that loves him this morning? Is there anybody that wants to give God a praise? Is there anybody that wants to give God a praise? Is there anybody that wants to lift their hands? Stand up on your feet and bless them right now. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oh. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Hey, yeah. Do me like Jesus. 
Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of I don't know what you come to do. I don't 
The need may be in your health. The need may be in your family. But God said, all I want you to do is offer up a praise to me. God says, all I want you to do is bless my name. God says, all I want you to do is lift me higher. Exalt me higher than any situation. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. The song brother said, I need Thee, oh, yes, I need thee, oh, yeah, every hour, oh, I need thee, oh, oh, bless, is there anybody that needs them? Me now, my Savior. song? Who knows this song? Who's heard this song before? Okay, we're going to sing it together. Y'all ready? One, two, three. I need I want you to sing this song. Every hour of the day, Lord, I need you. Every hour of the day, Lord, I need you. Oh, bless. Bless me, Lord, right now. My
Now, after all that, we just say, let the church say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. to be filled with praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we need you right now. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. church I am here to uh, introduce our first time guests and when I call your name could you please stand and remain standing and also guests uh, that doesn't belong to the church the first and Mrs. Louis we have sister Louise Tollert from Las Vegas Nevada <laughs> Uh, we have Bradley Pickle, but I think that he left. He was here earlier this morning. He said he had to leave. Uh, De uh, Dane Elliott. Uh, uh, she's the guest of the Turners. And we have Portia Anderson. Yeah. You stand? Any, any, any other guests that? would like to stand. I would like to welcome you here on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Charles Henfield, Jr., our Associated Ministers, and our True Love family. Uh, we welcome you here today because we know there are plenty of places you could have been, and we're just happy that you chose to come to Law's, uh, uh, True Love. Amen. And we hope that a song has been sung and a prayer has been prayed that would inspire you and, and the spirit, spirit be with you the remaining of the service. And we would just like to tell you that true love is a, a friendly church with eternal love. And we say, don't just watch us grow, but please come back and grow with us. Thank you very much. And you're welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise once again. Let's give God praise once again for all of our guests. Amen. Sister Griffin has already extended to you a hearty welcome. And we just want you to know that we are so grateful that God brought you here today. We pray that, the, again, as she stated, that something will be said, something will be prayed, something will be sung, something will happen somewhere between our invocation and our benediction that will so move you, amen, that you'll walk a little closer with God. You'll depend upon him just a little bit more. And if by chance you don't have a home church, that you would declare to yourself that the search is over. Amen. amen. We also want you to know, praise God, we want you to know that if you are a member of another church, another local branch of Zion, that you would please take our greetings back with you to your home church and let them know that we say hello and that we did our best to treat you like family today. Amen.
My sisters and brothers, it is now time for our giving of tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to try that again, my Lord. It's time for our tithes and offerings. <laughs> Praise be the name of God. Our ushers are passing through the aisles at this time. If you need an envelope, there are four ways that you can make your contribution. You can make your contribution by placing the offerings, your offering in the offering receptacles that are in the back of the church, our boxes. You can also go to our website at www.truelovembclv.com and click on the giving tab. The third way you can make your contribution is by going to our Ministry One app, Find True Love Mission. Baptist Church. Follow all of the directions there and you can make your contribution there. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to use the computer and I don't know how to use uh, Ministry One. Uh, please see one of our church clerks, amen, and they will uh, assist you uh, in doing so. If you need to have a quick tutorial uh, after service, they will take care of you. Also, the fourth way that you can make your contribution is by mailing to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 1941. North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. My sisters and brothers, this past week, as I was thinking about this time of tithes and offerings, and to give you a word of encouragement, I am so grateful to God that he turned me to the gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. And there in that chapter, we read about the widow who made a contribution of two mites. It was during the time of giving. She had brought her offering, and everyone's giving their offering, and they're placing their offerings in these boxes that are shaped like trumpets. And as they're dropping, the rich are dropping theirs, and this poor widow dropped hers. The Bible says she gave two mites, two mites. That meant that each one of the, the coins that she gave, it amounted to be what we would look at as one-eighth of a penny today. Huh? One-eighth of a penny. She gave two mites. That means it amounted to be one-quarter of a penny. She didn't even have a whole penny. Hello, somebody. But what happens in the text, which I found so amazing, sisters and brothers, is that the Bible says that she gave out of her poverty. And she gave all that she had, whereas those who were the rich folk were giving out of some of they had. They gave out of their abundance, but they only gave a little bit of what they gave. But she gave all. What are you trying to say to me, preacher? I'm trying to tell you, sisters and brothers, that our giving gives, gets God's attention. Amen. We don't hear anything about the rich people. We don't hear anything about, we don't have anyone's name. We don't know who it was that made the large contribution. But one thing that we do know about that text is, is that that widow woman gave all she had. And her story goes down in the record of biblical writ. I don't know what you have to give today. I don't know what you brought. I don't know where God is moving your heart today. But know that you're giving, not just your praises, not just your shouts, not your hallelujahs and all your dances, but also your giving as a part of worship. And it gets God's attention. Hello. Amen. And what God gets God's attention is as you make a sacrifice, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. That word, that law of, of sowing and reaping, it yet works today. Amen. Amen. Let's look to God in prayer. Everyone have an envelope. Everyone had an opportunity to give. Praise God. Let's look to God. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for an opportunity to give, Lord God. And Father God, I thank you that my call is not to stand here and beg for dollars but Lord God I am to instruct and lead your people so that your people will not be destroyed for a lack of knowledge the Lord God you don't need our money but you do require our obedience for obedience is greater than sacrifice Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless each person here under the sound of my voice. Those who had to give, as well as those who had nothing to give today. Father God, out of the abundance of your riches, continue to supply their every need. These your children, Lord God. 
so that they might echo David. Now, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Take these gifts now, Lord God, and use them for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. At this time, our praise dance ministry is coming. Come on, bless God. Bless the Lord as they come.
Clap your hands this morning.
stand all around the church hallelujah Lord we need a word from you hallelujah Lord we need a word its fullness send it in its fullness send it in its power send it in its power Lord we need a word from you Lord anoint your preacher now Lord anoint your preacher Lord, anoint your preacher. Lord, anoint your preacher now. Give your preacher fullness. Give your preacher fullness. Give your preacher power. Give your preacher power. Lord, Lord we need a word. word from you. Lord, anoint your hearers too. Lord, anoint your hearers too. Lord, anoint your hearers. Lord, anoint your hearers too. Give us the knowledge. Give us understanding. Give us the knowledge. Give us understanding. Lord, we need. 
Well, here we are once again, Lord God, gathered around the feet of your throne, awaiting to hear a word from glory. And God, we know that you can do anything and everything but fail. So, Lord God, we wait with bated breath. Speak now, dear Lord, for your children are listening. Speak, Lord God, until, Lord, we are moved from being hearers. Speak, Lord God, so that we will become doers of your word. And so that your word goes forth with power and might, sit me down and let Jesus now stand in my body. Take control of my mind that I might think your thoughts and take control of my mouth that I might preach your word. And as your word goes forth with power and might, may it accomplish the purpose for which you've sent it. God, I'm praying right now that you'll encourage somebody, that you'll heal somebody, that Lord God, you'll deliver somebody, that you'll save somebody, Lord God, and encourage them, Lord God, to walk just a little bit further with Jesus. And Lord God, we're just praying right now, Father, because we know, God, that you're about to do an awesome thing. We praise you in advance, and you can bless us along the way. Have your way in Jesus' name. The people of God said amen and amen. Lord, we need a word last time. From you, Lord, we need a word. Lord, we need a word from you. Send it in its fullness. Send it in its power. Send it in its fullness. Send it in its power. Lord, we need a word from you. Hallelujah. A word comes to us today from the gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Mark chapter six. Mark chapter six. Verses 1 through 6. The scriptures, of course, are on the monitor for those of you that did not bring your sword with you. Amen. Then, amen. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Amen. Let us read that together. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Hoseas, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Amen. Amen. As you go to your seats, I want to preach for a little while from the thought, don't sleep on my anointing. Don't sleep on my anointing. As you know, my sisters and brothers, we are concluding our family series, uh, Family Matters, and this fifth part, again, we are preaching, we are preaching on the thought, don't sleep on my anointing. My sisters and brothers, just can, can I just talk to you? It is so unfair, it's so unfair, sisters and brothers, when people underestimate you based upon where you grew up, where you went to school who your family members are, what you do for a living, and especially who you used to be. It's tragic when people don't appreciate what you bring to the table, when they don't value your past and present contributions, or even acknowledge who you presently are as well as who God is growing you to become. 
Ultimately, my sisters and brothers, when you, when you are not appreciated or valued, people will miss out on the blessed deposit of your gifts, your talents, and your graces. And as quiet as it's kept, most people cut you down due to their own insecurities. They verbally minimize your abilities in hope of magnifying their own or they're trying to attempt to belittle you so that they don't have to deal with and face their own inabilities. They'll often remind you of your past so that you won't have to, so that they won't have to accept the fullness of who you are now and will thereafter deflect their feelings of inadequacy upon you. They just can't believe you are who you are now and what you're doing now. Am I among friends today? You will have worked feverishly to become physically fit, and they will, won't let you forget how you were a fat kid when you were a kid. They won't let you forget how you were the ugly duckling and you were homely as a teenager. They won't let you forget how thick your glasses, the lenses of your glasses were, and how they used to be. You, you'll have to earnestly, uh, you will have earnestly dedicated yourself to your academic excellence, your personal transformation, and your professional development confidently becoming a recognized scholar a power thinker an eloquent speaker able to hold your own in any and every situation and they'll throw it in your face how you used to be dyslexic and you stuttered all the time have I got a witness in here today when they find out that you are successful, living large and in charge, they'll remind you of how things used to be in your life. They'll try to make you the punchline of their jokes, capping on how your family was broken than church mice, how your parents' money was funny, their change was strange, and their credit wouldn't get it. Am I on your street yet? Now, I know that that is not my story alone. I know that that's not my experience alone. Uh, am I among friends today? I know this is not just unique to my story. But have you ever had somebody to throw your past in your face because they cannot handle who you are now? They are waiting in insecurities, feeling as though they're not good enough, so they're going to try to make you not feel like you good enough. And because cliche rings true, misery does love company. Ah, they assume that the mantle of heartlessly humbling you to remind you of who you used to be, how you used to look, and what you used to lack. And if you fall for the okie doke, you will lose yourself. You'll fall into an abyss of depression or second guessing yourself, and you'll forget to praise him from whom all blessings flow. If you allow them to get the best of you, you'll forget to look back over your life and say, God did it. Everything I've accomplished, God did it. The person I am today, God did it. Oh, you can't let that rejection so shadow God's favor on your life, and then you end up being remiss to celebrate and say, see and look and see what the Lord done done in my life. I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it because 50 people can celebrate what God's doing in your life. 50 people can tell you it's an awesome thing that I see God doing for you and through you. And they'll tell you uh, that they celebrate and they rejoice with you. 50 people will let you know that God, what he's doing in your life, I'm excited about it. Because if he's doing it in your life, he's going to do it in my life. And if he's doing it in my life and it hasn't happened yet in your life, Life, you just keep on hanging on in there because you're next in line for a blessing. How is it, sisters and brothers, that 50 people can celebrate you and exalt what God is doing in your life and say all kinds of positive things and one negative person will open their mouth 
one negative person with nothing positive to say, one negative person can bump their guns, tell you, tear you down, and make you feel lower than a duck's footprint. How is that that happens? But mind you, 50 people have celebrated you, but you let one person tear you down. 50 people celebrating you, giving God praise, helping you praise God. And we oftentimes let one person booing in the background tear us down. But can I speak a word of liberation over your life? Can I speak a word of liberation into your spirit today? The people that cut you and me down, those who can't handle God's favor and anointing on our lives, they are not your problem. Let them say what they want to say. Let them think what they want to say. Think, but that's not your problem. My sisters and brothers, need I remind you that in Genesis 37, after Jacob gifted Joseph with a coat of many colors and in your face sign that Joseph, that Jacob rather favored Joseph over his other sons and following Joseph sharing his dreams of God's destiny for his life, his brother Brothers rose up against him and they wanted to first kill him but when they found out that a caravan of Ishmaelites on their way to Egypt was coming they sold a brother for 20 pieces of silver instead let me help liberate you this morning it's not up to you to be able, it's not up to them to be able to handle your anointing it's up to you and me to honor God and what God is doing in our lives so that we can become the best disciples that we can and the best people that we can for the glory of God. It's not up to them. It's up to you and to me to remember not only who you are, but whose you are. And it doesn't matter who likes it or not because their arms are too short to box with God. It's up to you, sisters and brothers, to so let your light shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Can I treat this thing like I feel it today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such is the case with Jesus. I'm in the book. That's the case with Jesus. Here in the gospel according to St. Mark in the 6th chapter, he and the 12 had sailed to the west side of the Sea of Galilee. Upon landing on the shore, my sisters and brothers, he's met by Jairus, uh, the synagogue ruler who begs Jesus to come out at once and to help his ailing, dying 12-year-old daughter. Along the way, my sisters and brothers, Jairus' house, uh, to Jairus' house, a woman who had been suffering an issue of blood for 12 years, by faith she reaches out, she touches the hem of his garment, and her issue of blood immediately drops up. And although it was reported to Jesus that Jairus' daughter had died because he is the resurrection and the life, Jairus' daughter is restored to life because no one can die in the presence of he who is the resurrection and the life. That was good to me. Somebody missed their cue to shout. That was so good to me. Jesus then returns to his hometown. He goes to Nazareth with his 12 disciples and my sisters and brothers Mark reports that on the Sabbath day Jesus is teaching in their synagogue. Now many of the people who heard him were amazed, they were astonished at his words and at his works. But soon their astonishment became rejection. Are y'all still with me? In, in, in his book, Rejected for a Purpose, author O.J. Talks writes, how we respond to rejection determines which side of its effects that we end up in. He says, rejection is something that we all face in life. 
We experience it at various times and in various forms. Sometimes rejection comes as adversity. Sometimes it comes as abuse. Sometimes it comes as a demotion or an eviction. Sometimes it comes as an exclusion or failure or neglect or prejudice. He further writes that rejection happens in various places. It can happen at school, it can happen at social events, it can happen at work, it can happen at home, and sometimes rejection even comes our way in church. Amen. Why do people reject us? They reject us because we don't meet their expectations. Why do they reject us? Because we exceed their expectations. Why do they reject us? Because when we try to accomplish things with them, it's always the wrong time for them. But he, he also concludes, though, that rejection is the chauffeur that's driving you to your destiny. Do we not serve the God who can take good things and bad things and still work it out for our good? Whose report do you believe? Do you believe God today? We got to hang on to that, sisters and brothers, that rejection is the chauffeur that drives us to our destiny. Again, Jesus has now returned to his hometown, Nazareth in Galilee, and as we shall soon see, he's rejected. He's the promised Messiah, and he's rejected by his own people. He has literally come to his own, and his own have received him not. But now it's time for us to just dive into the text. Y'all going to dive into this text with me. I hope your Bible's still open. I hope your Bible's still open because I need to show you how they slept on his anointing. Sound booth, can you bring me down just a little bit? I'm giving myself a headache. How is it that they slept on his anointing? Now understand, to sleep on one's anointing is to fail to appreciate and to ignore the significance of someone or something. To sleep on one's anointing is to reject them, the one who sent them, as well as what they were sent with. Go back and watch uh, the broadcast later. Hello, in case you missed that. If you sleep on someone's anointing, though, you're going to miss everything that God has purposed for you. Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Christ. He's the anointed one of God, but the people rejected him. They slept on his anointing. Let me, let me see if I can chew this up for you. Ah, when someone sleeps on your anointing, they, they, when they slept on his anointing, they rejected, number one, his powerful performance. He's teaching in the synagogue in his hometown, sisters and brothers. The synagogue is a place where he, this synagogue rather, is a place where he grew up in. The, the minds of the people are blown by his words and by his works. More than likely, Jesus was expounding on the law and the prophets. He spoke words of wisdom, and his words were accompanied by great works. Those who looked on were saying, where did this man get these things? It's in your book. Amen. It's right there in verse 2. Amen. He said, where, where, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? They are rejecting his powerful performance because everyone there had known him from his childhood on up. Now this boy Jesus is a man and he's appearing before them as a young rabbi teaching with wisdom and performing great works. They could not receive Jesus as their teacher because they remembered him as a little boy. Are y'all in the building with me? They remembered him as a little boy and as their neighbor. 
and because they slept on his anointing, and that's a dangerous thing right there. That's a dangerous thing, my sisters and brothers. Just because you don't know what I've been reading or studying or seeking God for or receiving from God in my office hours, in my off hours, and in my private time, it does not render me incapable of being used like God is using me now. I don't know who that was meant for right there, but you need to put that down in your notes somewhere right there. Just because they don't see what you've been studying and reading and what you've been working on and practicing in the background doesn't mean that you're not worthy to be in the foreground and still be used by God. They recognize him, though. The Bible says, where did this man, that's what they said, where did this man get these things? Are uh, y'all in the book, still in the book with me? They recognize him as a man, but they remember him when he was a little boy. Uh, glory to God, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. Uh, they, they remember him as a little boy who grew up among them in Nazareth. He grew up, but he couldn't be received as the man that he grew up to be. And that's a word for somebody here under the sound of my voice. In fact, that's a word for Lottie, Dottie, and everybody under the sound of my voice. Who's ever returned to the place where you grew up and the folks who knew you back when can't believe who you've become right now. But I stop by to tell you, don't you hide, don't you ever trip, and don't you dumb yourself down. Just be the person that God has created you to be, who God has called you to be, and confidently ask them, just like Kumo D, how you like me now? How? You like me now, but that, 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 that's not all they did when they slept on Jesus and now anointing. The second thing that they did was they rejected his present day personhood. Uh, Y'all in the book with me? That's in verses 3 through 4. It's right there in your book. Don't, I didn't make it up. Amen. I, did, I didn't put it there, but it's right there in your book. Amen. Uh, hey, l l let's add another level of understanding of the people sleeping on Jesus' anointing. Look at the text. Mark records that the people ask in the verse before, in verse 3, they, they, they ask the question, rather, is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary, the brother of James, Hoseus, Jose, Judas, and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? In, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 53, uh, 55 rather, the people ask the question, is this not the carpenter's son? Here in Mark they say, is this not the carpenter, Mary's son? But in Matthew, they ask the question. Matthew writes that they say, is this not the carpenter's son? Now, now check it out, check it out. It's here that despite his powerful words and his works, they actually are insulting Jesus because of the danger of familiarity. Let, let me, let me uh, make a pit stop right there. The danger of familiarity which implies that because they knew him since he was a child, that because they knew his mother and his father and his siblings, and because they know where he comes from and what he did for a living, they're in disbelief that he can genuinely operate in the anointing that he's now operating. They're, they're saying, we know who your mama is. <laughs> we know who your daddy is. We know who your sisters and your brothers are. And there ain't no way coming from the family that you come from that you could be saying and doing what you're doing and saying right now. My sisters and brothers, it also lends to mediocrity programming in that wise, what they're saying is, wise men only come from wise men. And there's no way in the world that you can be saying and doing the things you're doing because you're a carpenter. And all you know how to do is operate in the gifts and the skills of carpentry. How dare they try to cut down Jesus? 
when he's speaking words of life into their lives. My sisters and brothers, they're saying, they're saying that we don't know where you got these fancy words, these fancy works, but Jesus, you know better than we are. And check this out, my friends. He's a full-grown man teaching and standing in their midst in the synagogue. And even if they didn't respect him as a great teacher and a miracle worker, they should have at least respected him as a man. I don't see that in the text, preacher. Yeah, it's right there in the text. Because they say, is this not the carpenter? But the next word says, the son of Mary. Are y'all still with me? Uh -huh. J Jesus is a full-grown man. He's teaching and he's standing in their midst in the synagogue and they don't even respect him as a great teacher and a miracle worker, but they call him Mary's son or they call him the carpenter's son. So they just insulted Jesus and they disrespected him, reducing him to the sonship of Mary and Joseph and not a man. Don't just listen to what people say. Listen, don't just listen rather how they say it, but listen to what they're saying. They, they reduce him. And, and, and I just feel right there, I feel right there in my spirit. I need somebody to just help me say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. You see, because the, the danger of familiarity with Jesus is, is that they don't, they don't acknowledge his manhood. Jesus the carpenter, they slept on his anointing, ignoring his present day personhood in that spirit, in that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. The blind can see, the lame were walking, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf now had hearing, the dead were being raised out of their graves, and the poor were hearing the gospel because they tried to reduce him and they did not acknowledge his personhood. My sisters and my brothers, I, I, I can't stand folk like that. My God, my God. Uh, they, they, they get on my nerves when people act like that, judging us by who we used to be, what we used to do, who our family is. If they sleep on your anointing, check this out, and reject your present day personhood, they will miss who you are now and what God has gifted you with now. Is this helping anybody here today? I'm moving on, I'm moving on. But before I do, child of good, I, a child of God, I need you to understand that you should never be ashamed of who and whose you are. Don't be ashamed of the anointing of God that's on your life because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. God knew what he was doing when he blessed you with what he blessed you with. God made you as you are. He gave you what he gave you so that you might fulfill his purpose and bring glory unto his name. It's not a mistake that you gifted the way you are, that you're shaped the way you are. God did it, and it's marvelous. Yes. Finally, 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 it's, it's getting late. Finally, it's getting late. But I need you to have this third one so I can complete the set today. Uh, last one, and I'm done. Understand, sisters and brothers, when they slept on his anointing. They rejected their potential presence, presence, gifts, blessings. Are y'all still with me? All of your gifts, your talents, and your graces are gifts from God. They're given to you, but they're not meant for you. They're meant to bless the body of Christ. Are you still with me? The gifts that God has given you are presents, not they're given to you, but they're not for you because they're given to benefit and bless the body of Christ and to give God glory. When the people rejected Jesus, he uttered a, pro a proverb that no prophet is ever appreciated at their home and by those who know him. 
Mark further tells us that because of the people's lack of faith, Jesus couldn't work any miracles there in Nazareth except for healing a few sick people when he laid hands on them. So in rejecting his anointing, they rejected his presence, his gifts from God for the body, the blessings that God had for them. You see, in order for Jesus to have performed miracles in Nazareth, there had to be a connection between their faith in him and the miracles that he performed. But they rejected him. And by rejecting Jesus, they slept on his anointing and they missed out on what God had for them. Can I tell you something else? As a baptized believer, as someone who's saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, if you Bible-toting and Scripture-quoting, if you are a follower of Jesus, you must believe that in Jesus, God gave you who you needed, who possessed what you needed, and did what you needed so that you could have all that God intended for you to have. And because my sisters and brothers, John chapter 14 verse 12 tells us that Jesus says that we'll be able to do the same things that he did, but even greater works still shall we do. Please, sir, please, ma'am, don't sleep on my anointing. And don't sleep on the anointing of your brothers and sisters. Please, sir, please, ma'am, understand the gift that we are and the gifts that we bring. God has anointed us and appointed us for the benefit and the blessing of the body of Christ. Like I've told you before, my sisters and brothers, even if you don't believe in me, believe in the God that's in me. Because if you believe in the God that's in me, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Well, my sisters and brothers, as I look at the clock, I see it's about that time. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. But before I go, I got to shout you one more time. The Bible says that Jesus was a carpenter. And because most family businesses were generational, it's believed that Jesus operated in the gifts of craftsmanship with wood and also with stone masonry. For the very word carpenter defines and means one who makes things out of hard materials. Oh, bless his name. Somebody stick a pin right there. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Although we've never seen anything that Jesus ever repaired, anything that Jesus ever made or constructed out of wood or stone, John says all things were made through him. And without him, there was nothing that was made. In several of his teachings in the New Testament, Jesus gives clues that he was skilled in carpentry and its craftsmanship. He said things like, upon this rock, <laughs> I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, any, he said things like, anyone who hears my word and obeys these teachings of mine, will be like someone who built their house on a rock. And when the rain came down and the rivers flooded and the winds beat against the house, it did not fall because it was built on a solid rock. But then he gives a warning for those who don't know how to build. He says that anybody that hears these words of mine, and doesn't do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand when the rain poured and the rivers flooded and the winds beat against the house the house came tumbling down Jesus spoke sisters and brothers also about someone putting their hand to the plow that if you put your hand to the plow and you look back you're not fit for the kingdom of God. He said, my sisters and brothers, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden,
and I'll give you rest. Then he talks about something else that's made out of wood. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My sisters and my brothers, throughout Jesus' teachings, he gives us clues and hints that he knows about carpentry work. He knows about laying a firm foundation. He knows about building on rocks. He knows about constructing plows and building yokes. Those are the clues, sisters and brothers, that he gives us in the word of God, that he knows something about carpentry. But my soul <laughs> cries out, hallelujah. Because one day he said, I'm going to destroy this temple. And in three days, I'm going to raise it up again. I've never seen any pictures of anything Jesus ever built. I've never seen any pictures of anything he ever constructed. But because I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, I refuse to sleep on his anointing because I recognize that God is able to do just what he said he'll do. He's able <laughs> to do exceeding <laughs> abundantly <laughs> above <laughs> all that you <laughs> can ask or think. <laughs> because one dark Friday, <laughs> he showed us some carpentry skills. Jesus said, <laughs> watch what I can do with some wood, nails, and a hammer. <laughs> On a dark Friday, <laughs> Jesus showed us his carpentry skills. He was nailed to the cross for you and for me. One dark Friday, he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour, bridging the gap between humanity and man, the God, between creator and creation. Jesus said, watch what I can do with a hammer and some nails. Watch what I can do uh, with a piece of wood. Uh, I can complete the plan of salvation. And before taking his blast breath, Jesus said, did y'all see what I just did? Uh, it is finished. Uh, say yeah. But that's not how. That's not how the story ends. Don't you sleep on his anointing. Because three days later, he got up out of the grave with power and glory in his hands. Don't sleep on his anointing. Because 50 days after he rose, he kept his promise on building the church. For the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit fell upon the church. It filled every nook and every cranny of the house, and it filled his people. God built his church. We are his church. And even though my sisters and brothers, people try to belittle him, just try to reduce him to being a carpenter. The greatest thing about carpentry, again, I said stick a pin right there, is because a carpenter can craft things out of hard material. He softened your hardened heart. He softened our hardened hearts. He saved our souls. If you never see a picture of anything Jesus ever built, look in the mirror. You are hard material. You were raw material. But look and see what the Lord done done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look in the mirror and see what he did with nails, wood, 
and a hammer. And when you do that, don't sleep on his anointing to do even more in your life and to make of you something greater than you ever imagined. Don't sleep on his anointing. He's not a man that he should lie. He's Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. He's more than just Mary's son. He's more than Joseph's adopted son. He's king of kings, and he's Lord of lords. And he can take this old life of mine and this old life of yours, and he can carve us and shave us and construct and move in our lives so that we become the very masterpiece that regardless of everybody else's rejection, you will arrive at your destiny. We're standing all around the church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you, Lord God. We thank you for this final part, Lord God, of Family Matters. And Lord God, we recognize, Lord God, that it wasn't by our choice to be born into the family that we were born. Lord God, we know there's some skeletons that are in our closets. We know, Lord God, that there are some different personalities that are in our families. But Lord God, you brought us through who you brought us through. And Lord God, what you brought us through, you can still bring us to our destiny. Just because, Lord God, he didn't grow up in, in a seminary and he didn't grow up studying the word like the other religious leaders did, didn't mean that you didn't have a powerful anointing upon his life. And Father God, I pray that that word speaks to those who are under the sound of my voice. Don't let folk belittling you cause you to belittle you as well. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And even if people grow impatient, even if they grow weary, tell them, please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. And when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as gold. Because Jesus, the great carpenter, is still working on me. God, I pray that you'll speak this now into the heart, Lord God, and the minds of those that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Save someone right now. Continue, Lord God, to do a major work in their lives, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, encourage somebody who, Lord, who has fallen to the wayside. And, Lord God, maybe they've taken a wrong turn. Uh, Lord God, I pray for that U-turn in their life right now. And that brother, that sister, Lord God, that doesn't have a home church, God, minister to them now and let them know the search is over. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Where you are, where you are, would you please turn to two people? Turn to two people, ask them, are you saved? If they tell you anything other than yes, say, I walk with you. Ask them, do they have a home church? If they say anything other than yes, tell them you'll walk with them. Amen. And amen. Amen. Did y'all go to work? Amen. Praise the name of God. Amen. You may be seated.
They didn't have uh, gloves. Gloves. Oh. Actually, it's okay. It, it's okay. It's okay. Pardon me? Okay. Praise God. The loose. Amen. If by chance you need a communion vial, please lift your hands. Amen. If you don't have communion elements, please raise your hand so as our deacon is passing through the aisle, they can make sure that you get one. Amen. Just slide your, slip your hand in the air so they can see you. Praise the Lord. Can you start mine? Start my element for me. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, this is one of the two ordinances that we adhere to, that we recognize in the Baptist church. The first ordinance, of course, is baptism. That's our entry point into the body of Christ. But once you become a part of the body of Christ, this is the second ordinance where we celebrate what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. The Bible says, it says that no greater love have a man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. You know, we throw that word love around and we say, I love you, I love you, I love you. But Jesus showed us that there's more than lip service to love. That it's your words, but it's also your deeds. You know how Jesus showed us he loved us? He went to the cross for you and for me. He went through all of the mockery from Gethsemane all the way as he ascended Mount Calvary. He took the whippings for you and for me. The Bible teaches us that he was beat with a cat of nine tails, which means there were nine leather straps. There were these ends of the straps that had metal balls on them, and they were dipped in sheep bone. So every time they whipped him, they ripped flesh from his body, from his back, from his buttocks, from his legs, just for you. And for me, because greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. He took the crown of thorns for you and for me. And he never said a mumbling word. And then my sisters and brothers, they got him to the top of Mount Calvary. They got him there at a place called the skull, Golgotha, in its original language. And the Bible says that when they laid him down, they nailed his hands to the cross. They nailed his feet to the cross. They raised Jesus up between two thieves. Greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Understand, my sisters and brothers, he took the nails for you and for me because he couldn't bear spending eternity without us. Greater love hath no man than this than to lay down his life for his friends. So let us now pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. We thank you, Lord God, for this memorial meal that reminds us of what you did for us on Calvary. What you did on one dark Friday, Lord God, and that dark Friday, Lord God, it represents, Lord, the darkness that is in our hearts, in our spirits. But we thank you, Lord God, that Jesus was light in a very dark place. Now we pray, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you'll forgive us for our sins. Because we've sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we repent of our sins in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, as we gifts of bread and wine, we pray, Lord God, for the benefits of healing. 
but Lord God, for the reminder that we are saved by grace through faith. And we pray it all now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And together, the people of God said, Amen. Please stand all around the church. Mm -hmm. uh, from day On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. Let us now commune with the Lord. His power. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the remission of your sins. Let us now commune with the Lord. Yes, mountain. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Always be mindful that when he died on the cross, he had you on his mind. You may be seated. To the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. The blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Your financial statement, please complete the. Hey, True Love family, this is Dorothea, and these are your weekly announcements. To request a copy of your financial statement, please complete the financial statement request form and place it in the offering bin. When completing your form, please be sure to print clearly. True Love, we thank you for your faithful and generous giving. Because of your giving, we as a church are able to carry out the vision and work of True Love. When you request, please be sure to state your name, address, phone number, email, and how you would like to receive your document in either mail, in person, or email. Live for Christ Youth Ministry would like to thank everyone that supported our Black History Southern Dessert and Treat event. A special thanks to our sponsors for making some delicious desserts and everyone that gave a donation. Youth Bible Study is back. Youth, please join us every Monday at 7 p.m. via Zoom for our weekly Bible study. To get the Zoom information, get in touch with the youth leader or download the Ministry One app where the information will be posted. You are cordially invited to attend the Beta Lotta Debutante. High school juniors are invited to attend. This event will take place on Saturday, March 11, 2023 at the Gardens Community Center, Summerlin. The address is 10401 Garden Park Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89135. It will be from 1 to 2 p.m. To RSVP, you may contact Lady Taya Mathis Coleman. Her email address is tmathis1913 at gmail.com or you may call 702-375-1313. The attire is business attire. Parents and guardians are asked to attend as well. If you have any questions regarding this event, please feel free to reach out to Sister Robin McGow. True Love will be fellowshipping with Tabernacle of Faith as they celebrate their pastor and co-pastor, Frederick and Jenny Johnson's sixth year pastoral anniversary on Sunday, March 19th at 8 a.m. The address is 2030 Yale Street, North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89030. Also on Friday, March 24th at 7 p.m., Mount Jamington Baptist Church will be celebrating their 27th church anniversary. Their address is 825 East Street, 
Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. Our senior pastor, Hemp Hill, will be the guest speaker for both services. True love, if you are free, please come out and support. Thank you. Because We Matter will be sponsoring a paint and praise night on March 25th here from 3 to 5 here in the Reverend I.W. Wilson Fellowship. There are only 25 slots available. If you would like to sign up, please sign up in the lobby following service or sign up through the Ministry One app. True Love needs you. If you would like to get connected and serve within a ministry, please complete a ministry connection card and place it in the offering basket. Ministry connection cards are located in the front vestibule. To stay connected with what's happening here at True Love, download our mobile app by downloading the Ministry One app and searching for True Love. This will give you access to all announcements, events, past sermons, and so much more. You can also follow us on our website at www.truelovembclv.com and follow our other social media platforms. Family, as always, let's continue to keep our sick and shut and bereavement families in our prayers. Here's something to think about. The greater your knowledge of the goodness and grace of God on your life, the more likely you are to praise him in the storm. Thank you for worshiping with us. Have a blessed week and remember to love out loud. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise again. Hallelujah for who he is. What an awesome time in worship today. We praise God for each and every one of you. And again, to those guests that are here with us for the very first time, we pray that you'll come again. And if by chance you are a member of another church, please take our greetings uh, to your pastor and to your home church. Once again, my sisters and brothers, you've had the announcements. They are for you. They're here for you. In case you missed anything, you can go back to our Facebook page or to our YouTube page, and you can see those announcements all over again. We praise God for our music ministry. We thank God for our praise dance ministry. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Our ministers, our deacons, our mothers, we thank God for you, you, and you. And our ushers, y'all looking beautiful back there. Amen. Thank you for your service. Amen. Our ushers have let me know it's still windy outside, and they want to make sure that they protect me. So between the ushers and our nurses, I won't be walking to the back today. We're gonna be up, I'll be up here if you want to come up, fist bump. Amen. We're so great to see those of you who are sick. We see that God is still in the healing business, the blessing business. And we're so grateful to see your face in the place. Let's stand all around the church. You are the source of my strength. Amen. I love the one. You are the source of my strength. Yeah, yeah. And you are the strength of my strength. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who first loved us. They tried to belittle Jesus and belittle who he was. Call him just the son of a carpenter. Call him just Mary's boy. Call out his family members, Lord God, and not even understand the anointing that was on his life. But, Lord God, we recognize the anointing on his life because, Lord God, we see what he's done through us what he did to us, for us, and in spite of us. Thank you, Lord God, 
that you didn't allow us to sleep on his anointing, but that we would receive the gift that he is, the gift that he brings, and Lord God, to be the gift, Lord God, that you purpose us to be. May we let our light shine before men that they might see our good works and give you glory. No matter what it is that you've called us to do, Lord God, you've called us, Lord, to do it for your glory and for your purpose. God, help us to discover our gifts and to use them for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. As we leave this place, Lord God, may you forever, may your presence forever be with us, Lord God. Lead us and guide us. And Lord God, if you lead, we'll follow and we'll go with you all the way. Thank you for what we've seen and for what we've heard. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.